Hello my friends, Paul here in the Rojobi Music Workshop and welcome to part 5 of the Double Neck Guitar Build Project. Uh, okay, so before I get into it, I think I need to uh, say something which I've neglected to say in the first four videos. Um, because some of you might be confused, some of you might be yelling at the screen, no, you're doing it all wrong. Um, the, this, this project is going to be one side six string guitar, the other side is bass. What I did forget to mention uh, is that I'm doing a short scale bass. Um, and that's why I'm using, you know, two necks the same size. Um, so that hopefully will clear up any confusion. Um, so it's going short scale. And um, I've even bought some uh, special uh, short scale bass strings um, at considerable cost. These were about... Um, about 900 baht, so that's like $30 or £25 in real money. Um, so they were relatively expensive, um, but I had to you, I had to get the, the short scale ones because um, the the short scale strings, uh, well all, all bass strings, they taper in thickness, so they go thinner towards the, the headstock end, and these taper more quickly. Um, so yeah, so I've got the, the um, short scale bass strings and I've got uh, a matching set of strings for the, for the six string side. Uh, when I say matching set, uh, they're both the same brand and these are, turn the right way, <laughs> super light gauge, um, as are these. So they're, they're both super light gauge. Um, so the, the base ones are 40 to 95s and the six string are 9 to 42s. So bearing in mind that this instrument is going to have 10 strings on it, it's going to be a heck of a lot of tension on those strings. So I decided to go with super light just to try and keep the tension at, you know, down to a, to a minimum. Um, so, yeah, so it's going to be short scale bass. Um, now, at the end of the last video, where was I up to? Um, I can't actually remember. <laughs> but I have, I have made a little bit of progress um, off camera. I've been doing some of the work off camera. And um, one of the reasons is just because, you know, I, I needed to get on with some of, some of the jobs. Um, but some of the jobs I've done off camera are A, quite messy in that there's an, a lot of dust and debris flying around which I don't think is going to be particularly healthy for my camera and also uh, the, the jobs, some of, some of the jobs were quite fiddly and took a long time, you know, it would have taken up an awful lot of footage and not be particularly interesting. So I think I did show can't remember if I did or not, that I've made a template to cut out the neck pockets. Even says on there, neck pocket template. Um, so I basically drew, drew around the, uh, the, the back of the, the um, neck and uh, onto another piece of wood, well, on, onto this piece of wood, sorry, and then cut this out uh, using my bandsaw and... and uh, various other power tools and um, I also put this piece across the front um, so that because my router base uh, my router doesn't have a very big base so to span this you know it would have ended up sort of toppling over one side or the other so I've got this you know to um, you know to give it support for the, for the actual base and um, I test cut a, on a piece of wood the neck pocket and when I didn't do it deep I just you know put, put the the template on this piece of wood and you know cut out a, a test hole for the neck pocket now the way I put the the template onto the wood was around here I put some masking tape so I stuck some marking tape all around uh, masking tape all around here and the same on the back of the template and then super glue them together. That's, that's quite a um, common trick for woodworking. So, you know, you, you put masking tape around 
uh, on both sides and then you put the super glue on one side and you put them together so that holds it firm but temporary so that you know when you're finished you can just peel it off so I as I said I cut this uh, test neck pocket tried the necks in it perfect okay so um, I'm just going to show you what the instrument looks like at this stage um, and I've basically uh, mocked up what it's going to look like when it's finished okay so I've, I've temporarily got the necks in um, and the bridges on and I've just you know cut out a couple of foam circles to replicate the uh, sound holes um, so that's you know basically what the instrument is going to look like it's bloody heavy <laughs> you know with all that hardware <coughs> the two necks the big thick strong box it is heavy I haven't weighed it I'm not going to bother um, but and I'm going to kind of show you what I did almost in reverse order really because I you know because I've got it sort of all you know dry fitted together at the moment to test things out but I'm not sure how well you're going to see this but the uh, the necks fit into those neck pockets just about perfectly they're a really really good fit um, if I can show you the sort of the back end of it as well um, they turned out really well and they're a really decent fit in there um, to be honest <laughs> better than you will get with some factory models and I, and I can tell you that for a fact because I've seen some factory guitars where the neck pocket is appalling uh, and these are really tight really nice um, so the bridges are temporarily fitted on there so I, I put the necks in and you know marked everything up for where the bridges are going to go um, you know as I said long time consuming fiddly jobs that are not that interesting to watch um, so once I put the necks in um, I then lined everything up for where the bridges are going to go um, and I'll show you a little bit about this base bridge when, when I come to take it off now inside um, when I'd uh, cut out the neck pockets this this plate that I put in here and here um, you know they're fairly strong but once I cut the neck pockets out we was only left with about 8 mil of thickness on, on these plates now that would probably be strong enough but um, I wasn't prepared to trust it so I put an extra piece in of plywood which is 5 mil thick good, good quality plywood if there is such a thing um, and that's you know it's 5 mil thick and it's really stiff and strong and um, I put for each one there's a screw two screws at either end and you know to, to hold the two plates together they're glued in as well um, and these one one two three four and five they actually go into the neck itself is it overkill probably is it going to be a strong joint? Hell yes. <laughs> I mean, you know, at the moment they're just dry fitted. I will be gluing them in as well. So that these joints are going to be super strong. And I would rather go over the top than, you know, underdo it and, and end up with the possibility of it not being strong enough. So as I said, they're dry fitted at the moment. I've just, you know, put everything in to, to line everything up. Um, you know, first of all, to, to get the bridges where they need to be, um, and you know, just just start to line everything up where it needs to be, and uh, uh, you know, temporarily got the, all the tuners in as well, and I've even put the the screws in, so I've lined them all up nicely. I think they look pretty good, and drilled the screw holes and put the screws in. I just you know, just wanted to make sure everything was going together as it should be. Uh, so let me just draw the camera back a bit and I'm going to zoom in um, just a bit. Oh, let me angle that down a little bit. Okay, so what I want to do at this stage, now that it's kind of dry fitted together, is um, just check and test. The, the neck angle because they're, they're bo they've both gone in all the way and they're flat. Now I know for a fact I'm going to have to angle these necks back. Um, so
so that's another reason why I wanted to, you know, drive fit everything, put the necks in, put the bridges on, so that I can check uh, using my straight edge going along the top of the fretboard and coming up to the bridge um, to see how much I need to tilt these necks back. Now it is quite a bit. Um, so I'm going to put the end of the straight edge onto one of the string grooves on the bridge and then measure from the top of the last fret to the bottom of this straight edge and it's looking like uh, on the, this, so this is the base one, it's looking like about 4 millimeters, which does seem a lot to be honest, but I suppose it makes sense. Now if I move to the 6 string side and do exactly the same, um, so I've, I've got the, the saddle set at kind of midway from top to bottom so that I can get, you know, an average in the middle. So measuring this one just above the last fret and we're looking there about 3 millimetres. So what it's looking like is that the six string neck is going to have to angle back, um, best way to explain it is to basically lift this end by 3 millimetres. Um, but keeping this end, you know, as it is. So it's going to be tilting back with this end raising three millimetres. And then on the base side, the same thing, but raising up four millimetres. Um, as I've said, that sounds like quite a lot, but it, is, it probably is right. Um, so another way to check it, really, while I'm at this stage, with the necks dry fitted in, the bridges dry fitted on, um, when I say dry, I mean without glue, although I'm not going to be gluing the bridges on, um, but they've got enough screws to hold them in place. Um, what I want to do is, uh, just for shits and giggles, I just want to put a couple of strings on each of these, you know, the base and the, and the six string side. I want to cut, put a couple of strings on, the, the two outside strings on each one. Um, you know, just temporarily put the strings on, and then, again, that's why I put the tuners in as well, um, to check for three things. First of all, to check the alignment of the bridge side to side, to make sure that, you know, it's in the center so that the strings travel up the neck, you know, um, in the right position, you know, from one side to the other, and, you know, the same for both. Um, so as to check bridge alignment, which I'm pretty sure, because I've, I measured, measured, and measured, and measured again, that they are pretty close, if not, you know, close enough. Um, they shouldn't need to be moved, um, because, because of how I measured so many times and made sure everything was correct, um, they should be right. So as to measure, is to check bridge alignment side to side, but also, before I, you know, make any changes to these necks, the, the angle, just to see if I have got enough adjustment uh, for string height, string action. <coughs> the um, intonation not quite so crucial at this stage, but I probably will check that as well. So, you know, just, just to, as I said, just to, for shits and giggles, just to see, you know, where I am at the moment without making the adjustments to the neck angles. I probably am still going to have to uh, tilt these necks back. Um, but I, like I said, I'll know better once I've got a couple of strings on each of them and see where the action is. I'm almost certainly going to have to do a little bit of work on the nuts as well. The six string I'll probably have to lower a bit. The bass one I may have to raise a little bit, but you know, they're, they're pretty easy jobs to do if a little time consuming. And that will be much later. Now, if I do need to angle these necks back, how am I going to do it? Okay, simple, with uh, a wedge or um, a shim. So I've already made some up. <coughs> so using my uh, neck pocket template, I cut around the, the shape many times and um, you know cut, cut those out on the bandsaw, final shape them on the oscillating belt, oscillating spindle sander, and then got the, the wedge shape uh, using my um, belt sander. Now, I've actually made uh, six of them. 
So I've made them at different thicknesses. So I've got one at 2.5 mil thick at the thick end. I've got a 3 mil, a 3.5, another 3.5, although that says 3.5 plus because it is just fractionally thicker. Uh, 3.75 and a 4.75. So, I've already got them all made up, ready, if I need to use them. Um, you know, again, it was a, a time-consuming, fiddly job, but, you know, it needed to be done. <coughs> um, I've, I've got another couple of shorter ones as well, so that's kind of the, the full length, and I've got a couple of shorter ones. Um, not sure if, if they will work or not, but I thought I might as well cut some like that as well, and, you know, see what we need. <coughs> so, time. Okay, I've got about 10 minutes before this video times out. So, I'm going to put a couple of the strings on and see where we are for adjustability. Uh, I'm going to start with the bass side, just because that's the ones I've got in my hand right now. So, um, I'm going to put, as I said, the, the strings on either end. So, it's going to be the, the treble string and the bass string for, for both. Just, like I said, to see where we are right now. Okay, so that's the, the bass strings. Uh, let's see, I'm going to need... Uh, hmm. Okay, let's see. So that's the, that's the bass bass string. So, I'll temporarily put that one on first. To, uh, I'm going to need to make some alterations to get that in, so I'm not going to put that one on for now. It's a bit of a nuisance, but I was kind of half expecting that actually, because although these are short scale uh, bass strings, short scale in the bass means about 30 inch scale length, whereas on a you know standard electric guitar it's about in the neighbourhood of 25 inch. Okay, so I'm gonna go I'm not gonna bother with that one right now. I wonder actually if I can get away with the, the next string. No, I'm not, I'm not gonna bother. <laughs> I'll just go with the the treble string for now. It's, it'll be enough to you know to show me where I am at the moment. It'll be fine. Doing for time. Oh dear, I'm not looking good. Alright, let me just run this in. It's 
quick as I can. Okay. Oops. Come on, always on camera. <laughs> So I can see what we've got. Ow. Come on. Right. Ow. Hey. If it's going to go wrong, it's always going to be when the camera's running. When it's not, everything runs smoothly. <laughs> Sods law, eh? Right, hopefully that will just stay in there. Alright, that should be enough just to check uh, action, which I can see is ridiculously high. Um, exactly what I was expecting, so I'll just get my action gauge and so what's that side? So I'm going to go in metric because that's better for me. And at the moment, we're currently sitting at about uh, 2.5 mil. Actually, that's not too bad. So, let me just find a Allen key just to take that saddle down a bit and see if I have got enough adjustment on there. It's not as though I might do, actually. Let's take that down a bit more. Hmm, I'm wondering if I'll get away with that. That would be awesome if I could. <laughs> uh, right, so... I've got the action down to about 1.75 on the treble string of the base. That's surprising. And even the action at the first fret is looking alright. Well, who thought? Um, right, I want to really, really quickly just try the six string side as well. So, uh, let's see, I'll just go with one of the, the middle strings. Um, which is one of those. Uh, okay, let's go with that one. So this is going to be the fourth string. Let's get it out. Okay. So. Time, time. Oh dear. Right. Come on, quick as you can. Right. Let's just whip that up quick. Right. Let's just quickly look, look at the 
dimension there. Uh, about 2.25 mil. So let's take the adjustment. I've got plenty of adjustment on there. I might not even need to angle these necks, you know. That would be absolutely awesome if I don't have to. Tons of adjustment on there. I don't really understand how that's worked out. It shouldn't do. <laughs> uh, yeah, already about 1.5. Okay, so what that's telling me is I don't need to angle these necks. Now, I'm going to double check, treble check and quadruple check all over again. But at this stage, we're looking good. So I need to end this video here and we will catch you in part six. I'm going to, you know, do more of this and we'll catch you up. See you soon. Peace out.